Well, joining us here today in our one-on-one, -on -one, powered by Microsoft Teams, USC head coach Clay Helton. Coach, thanks so much for joining us here. Oh, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. So I want to talk about new Eagles defensive tackle, uh, Marlon Tui Pelotu, a player that you know very, very well. Uh, we're going to get into what he brings on the field and off the field. I want to first ask you just about the recruiting part process with Marlon. I know that he was relatively new to football, didn't start playing organized until his freshman year. Uh, what was it like recruiting him out of the state of Oregon? Yeah, you, you knew you had this young, raw talent, and, and his athleticism showed uh, for a man that was a 300-pound-plus individual. Uh, we kind of knew it was going to be a development uh, project, but we knew that with that investment, some really special things could happen. And that was evident early, you know, when he stepped on campus. His his athleticism to be able to hold, uh, hold right at the point of attack, his just natural strength. Uh, shine through, and, and we knew he was going to be a great player for us, but as good a player as he was, he was just as good a person and a leader uh, for our football team, so we, we knew we had the whole package. Uh, we are willing to invest in him uh, and his development, and it was neat to see what he's become, uh, which is one of the leaders of our football team, and now uh, a great NFL uh, dynamic player headed to the Eagles. Coach, you know, there's been some written about Marlon's background as a wrestler in high school. Uh, as for you guys as a staff, when you go into the recruiting process, do you place special emphasis on players that have that multi-sport background? And what is it uh, that bring, you know, that that wrestling background brings to the table for Marlon playing in the trenches? Yeah, well, I learned it from my dad. My dad is an NFL offensive line coach for a long time, and uh, and he was a wrestler. And he always talked about, you know, if you ever get an offensive lineman or defensive lineman that has – has uh, wrestling talent. You learn. You, you got a guy that knows leverage, knows how to play low, knows how to use his body and control his body. Uh, and it's evident to see that with with Marlon. You, you know, just himself as a first and second down player and being able to be a tremendous run stopper for us was unbelievable. Where I thought he grew a bunch over this last year was his pass rushing ability on third down. So, you know, you see that wrestling background uh, come into play. And it's, it's yes, it is something that we look at uh, in our evaluation uh, of what other sports kids play. And obviously Marlon getting into that wrestling phase has helped him in his career. Yeah, he had said in a uh, recent interview that he did after he was drafted, if he didn't wrestle, he probably would have played basketball, and I think that speaks kind of to that athletic upside, to that background. Uh, what have you seen from him on the field in terms of his overall development? You mentioned seeing him jump as a pass rusher uh, this past year as a junior. What were some of the areas that he is really strong in his game right now? Yeah, he, you know, when he came into us, he was, uh, he was always a great first and second down player. He's just so physically strong at the point of attack. Um, that he just freed lanes up for linebackers. You had to double to you. If you tried to put a center or a guard on him, uh, it was not it was not going to be to your benefit, especially on first and second down and run stopping downs. But where he developed, uh, and I, I was so happy um, of him being back this this last year and, and for these six games that we had. He had put a lot of work into his pass rushing ability on third down and really created havoc uh, on third downs now, which we thought was going to be needed for him to take that next step and really shine and, and help help out in the NFL. And that's where you saw, you watched the Utah game, it really stands out to me uh, because he just lived in the backfield that game, uh, created a sack fumble, which led to a touchdown in that game and really separated us in that game. But that's where he's grown the most, and that's what he's worked on, on the most. I thought uh, being with Vic Soto, our defensive line coach over this, and, and that friendship and relationship that they have and that belief they had in each other, I really saw a great progression this fall uh, for Marlon and something that was needed to be a, a high draft pick like he was. So um, it's great to see that relationship take place, that growth take place, and obviously it's paying off for Marlon and the Eagles. You talked about Coach Soto and that defensive line room. You know, whether it was Marlon, uh, you know, watching Jay Tufele in the past, watching obviously you have uh, Drake Jackson here for the next couple of years as well. Uh, that defensive line group as a whole, the way they chase the football, the, the, the play personality uh, kind of jumps off the film. Was that something that was natural to Marlon or did he just kind of uh, got to get brought into that atmosphere, that culture that is built in that room? 
Well, Marlon's always been an effort guy. But w- but when you put effort with culture and what is expected and the standard of play that's expected, like Coach Coach Soto and Coach Orlando, our defensive coordinator, I think it just elevates your game. And, and that standard of excellence that they that they put into that room this year, uh, I, I thought really elevated everybody's game. And you watch Marlon, he was the example. I mean, he was the rock of our defense, and he was the example of what we wanted as a Trojan. Um, just relentless effort to the ball. So when you put talent and you put effort uh, and you put that type of mindset together, uh, that's a special thing. And that's a, that's why he was such a high, high-projected kid. It's certainly something he'll fit in right here, well right here. Uh, Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, they've kind of established that same kind of mentality here in Philadelphia for a decade plus. Uh, Coach, the last question for you. Talked about that relentless attitude with Marlon. What is he like off the field, in the locker room? What are some of the things that he brings from a leadership standpoint? All I can say, he is tremendous in the building. Uh, an unbelievable teammate. Uh, puts team over self. He, he really feels like uh, individual, sex, uh, individual success is a byproduct of the team success, uh, you know, so it, he's one of those guys that's just an absolute blue collar worker that's consistent on a day to day basis. Uh, that just day in day out, you're getting the same guy, uh, and that's what coaches like. That's what I enjoyed as a head coach. I know Coach Orlando and Coach Soto enjoyed was just it, when he walked in the building, you knew who you were getting. A great teammate a blue-collar worker that gives tremendous effort each and every day, relentless effort each and every day to be his best for the team. And, and that's all you, can, all you can want as a coach. Well, Coach, thanks so much for taking a few minutes with us here uh, in this one-on-one powered by Microsoft Teams. Stay safe, stay healthy. Best of luck here through the rest of the summer going into the fall. Thank you so much. Take care.